And joining us back here on In the Circle, of course, the resume speaks for itself, of course, a national champion at UCLA, two-time All-American, two-time Olympian, gold medalist, was just recently part of the U.S. Olympic staff here that won the silver up in Tokyo, and of course, UCLA Hall of Famer, head coach at Loyola Marymount at LMU in her second season entering now. Uh, coach Flowers joins us here at In the Circle. You've got a lot of titles and, and a lot of mileage. I know I feel like you put a lot on it, but uh, right now I'm just wearing one hat. I know I keep kind of flipping them on and off. Uh, I mean, I guess the mom hat too, but as far as uh, which teams I'm with, I'm able to focus on LMU right now. So let's kind of, yeah, we, we're going to get into a lot of that because it's been a, uh, uh, certainly the off season. It says you kind of transition now back to just 100% focus. But you obviously had obligations with the Olympics that just conclude a unique Olympics for, for sure for many reasons. Uh, now, have you had time to reflect on it a little bit? What, what, how would you describe the experience as somebody who's participated in the Olympics as an athlete and no fans, but yet uh, a unique journey with a group that certainly hung in there against a lot of adversity uh, and a very competitive Olympic field? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you touched on all of it. A, a competitive field, um, it was extremely different um you know i don't know if i've truly reflected well enough but you know i get these questions often about um you know what was it like how was it different and obviously you're not hearing usa chanted in the stands and that can definitely propel a team forward and just give them that uh little extra to get things going but um you know it was it was what it was and it was for everybody um so I, I guess an even playing field as far as that's concerned. But, you know, I just kind of sad that the the players this year didn't get to interact as much. I would say more so it's the experience in the Olympic Village and which athletes you're seeing walking through the dining hall and being able to share that moment with all the other great athletes in the world. Um, but, you know, they made the best out of it and, we, we came up a little bit short, but super proud of, of the team and what we accomplished. Right. You wish it was kind of a, a, the full fan base, a full spectacle, if you will. But on the other hand, better to have it and not to have it, because that was a possibility that it wouldn't happen, which would have been rough, especially for our sport coach, because now we don't know when the next time we'll have the Olympics. We hope 28 in Los Angeles up there in your back, in your backyard there. But uh, and then with this Team USA thing, the thing I remember is this was not a typical, you didn't have a typical tour, you know, it got pushed back a year, you know, you weren't together, you know, I said throughout the Olympics, I thought Japan had a huge advantage and look credit to them, you know, they're the host, but they didn't have to travel, uh, you know, and things like that. And yet you all overcame that it could have been easy, this could have spiraled uh, uh, negatively. And yet you battled and, 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 and hung in there, had a chance to win the goal if a ball bounces a certain way, give credit to Japan. And I think it shows this sport is so is grown from a global standpoint. Absolutely. I, you know, I, everybody used to ask us, oh, did they take it out because you guys were dominating? And obviously that wasn't the case, but I mean, now just the parody in the sport and, you know, all the teams coming out and competing, it wasn't, you know, no, no one was just blown out, but, um, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. We didn't have the complete preparation going up until the Olympics. We didn't do our tour. Um, you know, our coaching staff wasn't with the team. And, oh, my gosh, we had some key people step in and, and help with the program. But um, and not to make any excuses, it just it wasn't the ideal situation. But, you know, we, we emphasize with the team. Right. We could not have been here. And it stinks that you don't get to, to share this with your family. But. You know, at the same time, they got to focus on the game and, you know, no distractions and making sure their families are safe or getting them tickets to get into the games. And, you know, it's that give or take in it. But, um, you know, like they said, we, we battled a, a, a hit here or there, a, you know, a dribbler that doesn't score a run, you know, the game, the outcome's completely different. So, um, you know, that's just the great thing about our sport. Anybody can win at any moment in time. And it was super competitive there. What's the what's the memory you'll take from that experience, uh, uh, from that whole experience? When you look back years from now, what will you remember about this experience this summer? And the people. I mean, just amazing people being able to have conversations with the players and the other coaches. And um, honestly, it's just it's it's a fun atmosphere. We get to be 
with amazing people nonstop and watching the highest level of softball that there is, it's just, it's like I'm a kid in a candy store. No doubt. And a great group and even former teammates of yours, you got to coach. <laughs> yeah. What's that What's that like coaching your former teammates? Monica Abbott and Kat Osterman, uh, you know very well. What, what is that like to be in that position? I mean, honestly, we're, we're managing personalities at this point. I mean, they know what they need. They, they know how to prepare for games, but um, you know, they would kind of joke of, I was almost like a little bit of a security blanket of just uh, a blast from the past and they just felt <laughs> comfortable. You know, I could walk into the bullpen and say, oh, I remember you used to do it like this. How come you're changing? They're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know I was or whatever the case is. But they're, I mean, ultimate pros. They know what they need to get done and they came in and competed and it, it was fun get, getting to see them on the field again. Oh yeah, you and Laura Berg. I mean, let uh, let's uh, they better be careful in their smack talk though a little bit there. Oh my you, gosh, I know. We even when Kelly Kretschmann was with us too, we were all talking. We should go coaches against uh, players. I don't know <laughs> if I can hang anymore though. <laughs> I don't know if you want to deal with Kretschmann. I mean, she could still swing the bat. Oh uh, my gosh, exactly. I'm like, I'll catch. You guys just, you know, you guys can hit. <laughs> right. Now, you and Berg, I don't know how would that go. You two would battle there. Who would win there? You, I don't know. Maybe you want to – that because I think you two are pretty competitive people. I've gotten to know both of you. So I feel like that would get real intense. Yeah. I think Bergy would uh, somehow pull out some kind of – something to knock me out or I don't know. She, <laughs> she'd find the way to sneak in, you know, the uh, illegal whatever to get the job done. She'll win at all costs. I love it. Describe being in the Olympics as a coach on the staff compared to being in, a, in the Olympics as an athlete. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a good one. I think that. Because um, not many can, can say they've done that. Uh, yeah, you, think, you, and Laura, you and Laura can say that now. Uh, I know, you know, certainly other people like, a, you know, have done that in other sports, but not many. Right, right. Um it's a different kind of butterfly in your stomach because you have no control. It's okay. We gave you the information. We can help you throughout the game. But um, I mean, the spotlight's no longer on us. It's just our job to kind of be in the background and just kind of keep whispering that those things that keep the confidence at a high level into their ears, but um, not a whole lot of difference. I mean, probably access to where you're going and, you know, the, 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 stuff that you're getting all the gear and the, the the little extras are different but you know it's it's like any game once you step out there and it's game time it's it's the same whether it's in tokyo or la or atlanta i mean it's it's all the same well if, if it's back in los angeles which i think we're hopeful and optimistic at least it's a drive for you possibly and <laughs> right I, and yeah. last and last <laughs> i heard we do have softball <laughs> facilities in in california that exactly. we can help out i know we've been trying to speculate where we think it'd be played but i don't think i have any idea well that hopefully we get to that point that'll be a fun experience for the sport as well and the, and the continued growth over there because i think the world got to see how great a lot of the countries are canada was great uh yeah. you know obviously japan is fantastic there, but Australia, obviously, even Italy played, showed themselves very well. So I thought it was a well, a great representation for the sport. And I think that's going to be the lasting image, I feel, for the this Olympics, for all the softball. It wasn't necessarily who won or lost. It's the fact that they got it in and they showed the world what a great game this is that could push it forward, hopefully, with Los Angeles and then Brisbane after that in 2032. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I hope um, we definitely inspired a lot of people to keep it in there. So you've been doing all that. Also, you've been coaching, obviously, at LMU and transitioning in a unique circumstances because you've obviously had to deal with the COVID as you're taking over a new program. So just describe what has it been like for you from that standpoint the last couple of years. You're not only obviously handling multiple things, but you're handling a new program. Yeah, I mean, it's I feel like I'm still trying to get a handle on everything. I am not even at my one year mark, but excited for a second season and I mean, honestly, keeping it super simple, I'm excited to have a full fall with the team. You know, last year we just kind of hit the ground running and credit to the team. They just, they were excited and they bought in and we, we did what we could this year, but um, you know, it's time to break it all back down and get after it again and hit that grind. What did you learn about your team, your, the pro, the school and yourself last year? The team, um, we've got some 
great talent, um, some grinders, just gritty kids that want to, to get better and, and compete when it comes down to it. Um, I think the university itself, it's, it's amazing. I mean, honestly, I have never seen people on campus and walking around and had the full experience of it and school started this week and I'm excited. I think we can uh, show off this place and get some good recruits in. Yeah. But, you know, for me, it's um, yeah, what I'm learning about myself is uh, just, a, a re I have a renewed love for the game, I guess. It's new and you're trying to figure things out. And um, I think there's just multiple ways to do something. So I back to the drawing board of kind of perfecting my coaching style and what I think is important. And, you know, I can almost start over and, and learn from my maybe mistakes and, and the things that we did well at a previous school and just build off of that here. Obviously, you got some new faces on the team, both from a recruiting class standpoint, from a transfer standpoint, a couple names that jumps out, obviously, Logan Camo, the pitcher coming over from Clemson and Georgia Blair, big bat from UCF that I know a little bit pretty well up seen up close, uh, tremendous power hitter. Just talk about some of the new faces you coming in headlined by those two. Yeah, I think just great experience. They've seen the game at a high level. I mean, they're day in and day out practices. They're constantly competing. And I hope that they bring that into this program here. Um, but just looking for some experience and some confidence. Just, I mean, it rubs off if you're constantly being pushed to, to get to the next level. Everybody has to figure out a way to, to stay up. So um I, I think it's a, a great addition and I'm excited to see what they can do because it, it's been a while since I've seen either one of them in person. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's I, funny. You're not the first coach that has told me that has been a consistent message that I've had coaches on the summer and fall. They're like, I'm still getting to know people, even though I've recruited them. I haven't talked to them in person in a while. It's part of the whole, obviously been a lot of virtual stuff over the last year or two. How much of a adjustment is that, that, you're bringing players in, you've been talking to, but you haven't really talked to them in person. <laughs> I mean, it's, it seems so silly. I mean, to even be able to say that, but you know, I think it, it's, everybody's just on this new high, this new level of excitement and knowing that, Hey, I can kind of reinvent myself and go out there and I mean, just blank slate and nobody's kind of put in any of these boxes. It's just, I think it's an exciting time for everyone. Obviously last year you had a great pitcher, Marina Vitalich, who got to some big wins there. Obviously was a grad senior, uh, really helped you kind of in your first year there. What now, you don't replace her, obviously. You obviously add a camel, but just talk about your pitching staff here over this upcoming season and kind of some of the names to look for and maybe some of the things you're going to be looking for yourself. Absolutely. I mean, we're just, we're looking to truly create a staff, um, you know, not have to rely on just one arm. And as much as we threw Marina, just the growth in PJ and Ale, I think they were such a great compliment at the end. It's just, you know, as a coach, you kind of get comfortable with one arm and you, and you know that you've, you've seen it in the, in the, the big moment. So um, I'm excited to see what those two returning, Alessandra and Paulina, but um, obviously adding Logan, we've got freshman Savannah Hooks, who's a lefty. It'll be nice to see that mix in there and Jessica Hubbard and uh, Maddie Askins. I just, I think they all bring a little something different, um, you know, whether it's a downspin to an upspin to maybe a change up to movement. Um, it'll be exciting. Uh, a little pressure on Christian going in, but it'll be exciting to see how they, they mesh and work off of each other. Offensively, uh, you've got some great returners, some of the leaders there first, you know, uh, but you also have some newcomers coming in like a Georgia Blair and others just kind of, how do you see the offense kind of envisioning there uh, and, and being productive? Because you had your moments even last season, especially as you got into conference play. Yeah. Um, hopefully we'll add a little bit more speed this season and be able to steal a few more bases, but the bats, you know, I think honestly, my take on it, they were so receptive and just eager. I think sometimes they put a little too much pressure on themselves of, I want to prove myself to the new coach, to the new people. We haven't played just to my parents. I need to prove that I, you know, I can even still do it, but I think this year will be a little bit more relaxed and confident going in and 
Um, I mean, we were adding maybe just a few more vision training tools or, you know, whatever the case is and, and try and just get more live, but um, just really making sure they feel prepared going into the season. Of the returners, who are some of the leaders you're, you lean on from an offensive standpoint? I think definitely um, Megan Diedrich and, um, you know, Dre, I think she was solid for us at third base and we kind of moved her up and down in the, in the lineup, but um, even um, Morgan, uh, brings a little lefty. She had a game winning grand slam at one point, you know, I just, we, like you said, we saw some good glimpses of some greatness and now it's just time to be a little bit more consistent with it. But, um, Megan and Andre are both, uh, fifth years. They're starting their masters and still being, um, leaders for this program. So I'm excited to see them. How important was it to get them back for that extra year, that leadership they bring uh, to the youngsters there and kind of build on that there? That's huge. Oh, yeah, huge. I mean, you, you took the word out of my mouth. Um, I mean, that's our left side right there in, in bringing in Georgia and some of our freshmen. They'll compete. So I have no idea what our infield will look like, but having all of those bats play off of each other and not one of them feels that pressure to have to carry the team and be the, the one to get the big hit every single time they can just be themselves. I'm, I think it's just going to make for just a, a tremendous offensive season. You mentioned this is going to be a second year. I've always had coaches tell me that, you know, that second year, it's a little smoother because by then the players know what kind of what's going on and the coaches kind of know the players a little bit more. So that first year is always some hiccups because you're still learning each other. Do you feel that's kind of turned the corner there as well as you all get, get set for your second year that you're kind of all, oh, that's what, okay, that's what she meant. That's what we're doing. That's right. Whereas, you know, the year before there was a little hesitancy perhaps. Do you sense that? I do. I do. I um, I think it's a little bit of a mix. Like I said, we had, we had a, the majority of the team just like bought in and ready to do whatever we wanted. Some of us, some of them wanted us to change them more than we wanted to at the time. It's like, you already, you're good. Just go out there and, and get after it. But um, being able to break things down and, and talk things out a little bit more now that we've already created relationships with them, taking it to that next level. So, um, you know, like I said, being able to really have a fall and dive into things and not just compete mode. It's we're learning now and growing. So um, I think it'll be huge in, in going into year two. What was your impression on the West Coast Conference year one as you got to be a part of it? You got to see it up close. Obviously, BYU, Pacific. It's such a unique league because it's a six-team league. But as you know, I spoke to Gordon Eakin about it. That creates kind of like a postseason atmosphere every weekend because you know one bad weekend could put you in a big hole from a conference championship standpoint. And of course, there's no conference tournament. Yeah, I mean, that's a great point. Um, and, and I think that's what Gordon does well with his team is they're just so consistent throughout the, the conference. And um, I was honestly impressed and not that I think I, I wouldn't be, but just every single team has gotten better from times that I played them years before and bring the, the universities are putting resources into their programs or hiring new young up and coming coaches. And I mean, it's competitive and, you know, I laugh because I wasn't out recruiting all summer, but my coaches would come back and they'd say who they saw where, and, you know, it, I mean, we're all competing for the same players. We're looking for people who are, are strong in the classroom and out on the field. So, I mean, it's just, you're competing everywhere. Um, so it, it makes it a little fun on that point too. What is it like when you all coaches in the West Coast Conference get together for your annual meetings there? I mean, you got Coach Eakin there. You got Coach Cozy, who's been there forever. But I mean, these are people you know. You probably, have, you know, you're one of the youngsters on the staff in, in the league. <laughs> I'm probably right in the middle. I mean, <laughs> funny. I have I haven't been to uh, one of ours. It's next week, so I'll, that'll be my first conference. Meeting. Oh wow, that's wild. But, yeah, but we. I mean, we like you said, we all know each other. Whether I coached against them when I was in other school, I played against them when I was younger in college, and. Um, it's definitely a good mix, but definitely out on the recruiting trails or um, when we played against each other. I mean, I think we probably had more fun uh, just living out some of the memories before the game than some of the girls did. 
what's fascinating and he picked up on this as well you know to get they want more respect in the league and part of that is playing a tough non-conference schedule even though you were limited on what you could do you still were able to manage a tough non-conference schedule despite your limitations just talk about that philosophy from a league standpoint to get because this league is tough I mean, you, you know, but there's programs that can win marquee games out of the conference. That's how you get your name out there and maybe turn this league into being a two bid league. You know, we, you know, there's been years where LMU and BYU are battling. And unfortunately, you knew that was basically winner goes to the tournament. The other one likely goes, doesn't. Uh, just talk about that philosophy because you both have kind of, you, you've played a tough schedule yourself over your years as a head coach. And even though you were limited last year with travel and, and things like that, you still were able to mark, put some tough games together. And I would assume that would continue. Absolutely. I think it's essential. I mean, I kind of always go back and forth. It's do you schedule wins? It, things, things that you, teams that you think on paper that you should. And I mean, it's always great to build some kind of confidence, but I mean, the reality is, even if we, you win conference and you go postseason, you don't want to be two and out. Like you have to be able to play those teams and be ready to compete at the end. And that's, I mean, basically the philosophy of, you know, if we play five teams in a weekend and they're all tough competitive games, that just every game matters. And I think that that's what translates into conference of, right, you can't take games off. Everybody can beat you at any time and you got to figure out how to string three together. Um, and just, you, everything's thrown at you. You've seen good pitching, you've seen good defense, you've seen hitters, different kinds of hitters, different teams obviously have different philosophies on power and speed. And I think it just helps you be more prepared when, when it comes down to conference and it matters a little bit more. I would imagine coaches like you, especially on the West Coast, probably appreciate those tournaments that you lost last year. I'm talking the Mary Nutter uh, tournaments you've gotten to, you know, that you've hosted because you those are your tournaments where you bring in those marquee games. You don't have the luxury in, in most cases on the West Coast, like the Southern, the Southern schools that just bust the games. And right. that obviously was a big hot topic there. I would imagine there's a more of appreciation now on the West Coast for these tournaments, just knowing, man, you know, that's where we got our marquee games and stuff like that. Uh, I think there would be much more appreciation for everybody. Like, yeah, let's go ahead and play these tournaments where before they're like, yeah, what's the big deal? Right, right. Because you thought you could pick up games everywhere else. Right. Absolutely. Um, I think those are huge, especially for us where we're not traveling a ton. And yep. like you said, you can't just pick up a random game here and there. It, it, trying to get those out of region games against top teams. I mean, that's huge. That can help you pre get more prepared if you get sent away for, for regionals or just it gives you another look. Cause I, I, I do feel probably style of play in the SEC is different from a Pac-12 than to a big West. So it is nice to see um, some variation, but I mean, it's huge when you can get quality five quality games in a weekend. I mean, that makes a big deal. Huge difference. And I think that was kind of lost. Uh, and I think a lot of uh, coaches have told me they've, they, they admit it. They took that for granted and, and they learned that, the, you know, how, because it was, it, how challenging, I know you can't get into specific, but it had to be one of the more challenging years from your, from your career, from a scheduling standpoint last year, concerning everything that was going around, uh, going on around you. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, and it's a little bit trickling into this year, but just people's budgets and whether they can travel and honestly people coming to LA that's not kind of the highlight for people right now because we've been shut down so much sure. so it's just finding quality finding enough games I mean I think we probably played almost everybody on our schedule more than once you know it's like you, you need a little bit of variation but um, again it does help when you're prepping for a three-game series in conference to see the same team and see what kind of adjustments you can make but um, absolutely ready for things to open back up and get that variety. Everybody is uh, hoping yeah. <laughs> uh, for that. Trust me on that. A um, couple last things. I know when we had you on, when you got hired about, a, like you said, less than a year ago, it's kind of flow. It was wild. Right. You mentioned one of the things that drew you was the academic side of the school, uh, the law school and things like you were fascinated. I'm curious now that you've been there for a year, has it been what you thought it would be from an academic standpoint? 
All the teams at LMU, just to, for the audience not may not be aware, we're above a 3.0 GPA in the spring semester. That includes your program as well. Uh, you had you know six of your players on the all academics uh, graduation. Just talk about the academic side because that's something that kind of I don't know if people realize about the academics over there at LMU uh, from a law school standpoint. I know that was something that caught you eye and one of the reasons you got there. And I would imagine you have not been uh, you've been you've you've probably been it was what you thought it would be in this year, hasn't it? Absolutely. It didn't disappoint. I think um, when you're, when you're talking to motivated people, they're motivated in all aspects of their life. And, you know, that was one thing we would preach all the time. If you can't just turn it on and off. I mean, you, you hear coaches say that to athletes on the field, you can't turn it on and off. You always have to bring your A game. I think that's just work ethic in general. So seeing these young athletes, want to compete in the classroom and it's important to them and honestly loving the class size i think it's probably a 10 to 1 ratio of professor to students for us so just that interaction and really truly feeling like they're learning and being heard and building relationships i mean it, it's huge for life and success after softball so um I, I i love it and i love how passionate our players are about it and do you feel that feeds off onto on the field because they're competitive on the classroom you mentioned the interactions that's something you need as a team how much does that help to from an on the field standpoint that yes you can have high academics and, and, and take care of business in the classroom but that could also help get success on the field absolutely we talk about being intelligent on the field it, it's not um just picking pitches and what's coming but outthinking your opponents and how can we be more creative? How can we use our skills to our advantage? And um, I think that's probably one reason why the team was so receptive. They wanted to learn those aspects of the game last year. And so building off of that, and I mean, they're, they're thinkers. So it was, as long as we were clear in our delivery, they got it and they wanted to build off of it. So, you know, sometimes that's good and bad. Sometimes you're overthinking in the game and it's just let your skills take over. But the fact that they can, be a little bit more strategic in their games. I mean, that's just that that's next level. And that's how we're going to get to to the next level. Two last things. One, first of all, I've noticed now uh, in your office, you've got the, the uh, framed photo of the famous Sports Illustrated <laughs> cover. I just noticed that I don't I do. Well, that was, was a gift. <laughs> OK, but I, I mean, is that by design or is, you know, there's a purpose there? You know, if you've got a recruit coming in, hey, look, look at that. We got a plaque. I mean, that's oh, one of them. Yeah. One... <laughs> I would say um, a little bit of both. It's for me to, you know, remember the, the glory days. But for for recruits, absolutely. I think uh, probably my, my Oprah picture right here might be a little. Oh, more wow. Fun. I didn't see that. Oh, you, when was that? I didn't know you all were on with Oprah. In uh, 2008, she had all the Olympic teams, multiple sports come on. And uh, at the end, we all got to take photos with them. So I, got, I think I have a little bit of everything. Some former players, if they put together little frames and pictures or quotes. And then I've got my retirement fleets up there. It's just That's trying pretty, to keep a nice space. Yep. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. How, what was it like meeting Oprah? Oh my gosh, what you see on TV, that's how she is. Like she is always on and the welcoming and the, you know, hello. I mean, sorry, she, it was awesome. She was great. <laughs> that's awesome. No, I mean, not many people can say that. I didn't realize that. That's pretty cool. And then, you know, when you look at that photo, that 04, again, that's one of the most famous posters ever, especially in the sport of softball. I mean, we've talked about it when you've been on before about the impact that that, that 04 team you all had on the sport from a growth standpoint. I mean, it's the dream team of softball, kind of what the 92 team in Barcelona was for men's basketball. When you look at that photo, what comes to your mind? Again, just great people. I mean, it was an up and down year. I mean, we had obviously the great gold at the end, but the, um, you know, we, we had some battles throughout and a tough, a tough journey leading up to it. But, um, you know, even during COVID, we, we did a, a Zoom with all of us just getting in touch. And I mean, those are some of my, my closest friends and just so many experiences because we all played over a span of time with each other. It's just, it, it makes me happy. And I think that's why I have it here, just to remind me that you can enjoy what you're doing and still be competitive and get it get the job done but 
you know, it, it, you're making memories. Yeah, I've heard from members on the team that we've had on the show that that there's that bond that you're still close, even if you haven't spoken to a teammate in, in months or years or whatever. Once you do see them, it's like you just you know been talking every day. Is that you pick right back up? Yeah, yep. absolutely. That's incredible. That's an incredible inspiration. That team should be one of the greatest sports teams of all time and <laughs> re- recognition. Uh, last, so last thing now, obviously you get to get fall here as you learn your team and things. What are some of the questions you're, you're looking forward to getting some answers here uh, this fall and is before you get preparation for the season and some of the keys that you need to find uh, to have a successful season? Um, I think every team out there is probably looking for their best leaders. Who's going to step up in the crucial moments? And, you know, you always have an idea coming in, but sometimes you're surprised and you have – somebody that you never thought of that's ready to take on that role. Um, And just, we have so many tools, just what it's gonna look like at the end. I mean, we're gonna be rotating people around. We brought in athletes and people that can play multiple positions. So it's gonna come down to who can compete when the game is on the line. And I think it's gonna change more than what we think, but I'm excited to see them go after it. But well, we're excited that finally you have a fall. We're finally uh, we're excited about that. Look forward to seeing your team, and we're glad that you at least can take a breath now. You know, right, I, feel, right. <laughs> I mean, you've you've had an incredible run here with the Team USA, obviously uh, in preparation for the Olympics. And I know a lot of people appreciate your hard work because that's you know that's taking time out of your own life and personal life. And I hope I think a lot of the players. I know people have told me from the player side and the other coaches that uh, the appreciation they have for you helping out. So I think everybody, softball fans, should appreciate you for that. Uh, and we look forward to seeing your team coming on the field here at LMU now and, and focusing there as you compete for a conference championship and beyond. Thanks, Coach, for taking the time and the busy schedule. We always love having you on, and uh, we'll definitely definitely have you on again down the road. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me.